Welcome to the Dads Who Diaper podcast. Nobody ever says, hey, daddy, thanks for knocking out this rent. Who says dads can't change diapers? I'm the cool dad. That's that's my thing. I'm hip. I, I surf the web. I text LOL. WTF. Why the face? Your boy's a handsome lad. Thanks. She's actually a girl. It's my daughter. Oh, my God. Yeah, her hair just refuses to grow. Coming to you live. From the Dads Who Diaper studio, it's Paul and Chad. It is the Dads Who Diaper podcast. My name is Paul Snowden. Right there to my left, the man who loves a spiced pumpkin latte more than Saturday football, (laughs) it's Chad Carter. I am proud to say that that statement in is no way accurate are you not buying the spiced pumpkin lattes no i am not a pumpkin spice latte drinker uh i am an iced coffee drinker almost year round um and (laughs) i love football so it is uh yes uh, i'm gonna go ahead and declare that statement false and your washington (laughs) state cougars almost beat oregon don't even get me started oh man you know what it was a great game we put up a a good showing if we weren't robbed by that one call at the end who knows it may have been a different story but uh we we put up a good fight so i am back from disneyland and i thought about you constantly because in the parks there are starbucks now Mm, yes. There are Starbucks on Main Street there, at Disneyland. I, I, call, I call multiple Starbucks Star Buy. So you, you saw multiple Star Buy while you were there at Disneyland? I did. I went to a Star Buy. Nice. And I bought some stuff for my wife because she enjoys the Star Buy. Good. And I even took some photos for you. You did. Of the special cups that you get when you're at Disneyland and you stop by a Star Buy. Yeah, the Disneyland Star Buy cups. <laughs> they are magical. So I thought about you there, buddy. Excellent. I, I enjoyed the photos. They were they were well done. And um, a big show this week. We're going to talk recapping some of my Disney vacation. Mm-hmm. And I think we should talk about a reaction from that is bringing back stuff and having the overflowing toy box. Yeah, you're kind of to the point now where you're segueing out from infant type toys and more into kid or toddler toys. And with that, I, I would imagine comes uh, larger toys because we're kind of already seeing that a little bit in our house, but not to the same degree you are. So I, I would assume that you kind of need more space. And so you got to you got to do a little purging or something. See, we're the Petri dish for whatever happens in your house later. Exactly. We're just a few months ahead of you. Mm-hmm. So you can just look ahead and be like, oh, what problems are they having? And <laughs> how are we going to solve that when it's our turn? Yeah, we're just going to plan ahead so we don't ever have any problems whatsoever. Yes, that's the ticket. <laughs> that's what I'm telling myself. Now, we do have some exciting things on the website. We do have a really great discount from Dad's Gear, who we talked to on the podcast two weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. They're doing a, a fantastic offer for all the Dad's Who Diaper uh, listeners and visitors to the website. So head on over to dadswhodiaper.com, and right there on the top, you're going to see an exclusive promo code, and you're going to get 15% off all the items there at dadsgear.com. Which is pretty sweet because they do make great bags. They do. I'm a big fan of their backpack. They make messenger style and a few others, but I think their backpack style bags are really great. And one of the the biggest features, it it may be a small thing for most people, but for me, I love the fact that it opens all the way up. So you can literally, uh, it becomes 180 degrees open and you can get everything inside and you know, look and find everything. So it's uh, to me, it's a great feature. It also lays flat. So if you have to change a diaper on it, mm-hmm. you could do that. You could lay it flat, put a little blanket down, and use that as your diaper changing station. Exactly. So head on over to dadsudiaper.com and find that exclusive promo code for dadgear.com and maybe get yourself a nice uh, diaper bag. Or maybe if your husband needs a diaper bag, go ahead and purchase it for him. And speaking of diaper changing stations and the website, I quickly want to point out an editorial we have on the site Um, I don't want to get into entirely here because I want you to read all the particulars, but essentially the governor of California, Jerry Brown, vetoed a bill that would have required – well, two bills, but they're kind of the same concept – is that would have required equal access for guys to diaper-changing stations. All new buildings would have to have a diaper-changing station access for guys as well as women. Right. It would – 
It would either require putting a changing table in men's restrooms or creating a family style uh, restroom. So where you can men have equal access as women. Uh, the governor vetoed both of those bills and uh, decided, both bills that passed the House and the Senate and right. got to his desk. And then he vetoed. them. Yeah. And he vetoed them saying basically he thought that uh, it, it wasn't necessary legislation in California. So uh, go ahead to head on over to dadsudiaper.com, Read our editorial there and uh, find out a little bit more about it and let us know what you think. I mean, I mean, it is should dads get equal access? We believe they should and that it's important because, you know, unless you're if you've ever been out and you have, uh, you know, a blowout or you need to get your diaper, you know, your child's diaper changed, finding somewhere to do it cannot always be easy. And uh, but maybe you agree with the governor. Tell us why. It, Share your opinions with us. Do does this need to be legislated? Do we need a law asking business or telling businesses? To give men access, men, dads access to a diaper changing station. Mm -hmm. Right there. Check out the editorial. Leave a comment. What do you think? Dadswhodiaper.com. From the website, Dads Who Diaper, comes the Dads Who Diaper podcast. We now have the Dads Who Diaper podcast officially taken care of. I promise. After months and months and months of inept IT work on my part. I can pretty much rest assured that 92.5% of it is done. So if you're listening to this podcast right now, Paul has worked his magic. If not, then we're speaking to nobody. What I'm trying to say is it is easy for you to subscribe now to our podcast to get it every week delivered right there on your iTunes or Stitcher Radio or even play it right there off our homepage, dadswhodiaper.com. The right side, scroll a little bit down, you'll see the player right there. Yeah, we... we We've we've moved it. We our, our hosting has relocated, and now everything is under one roof. We've gotten to the size and demand. Now we had to move it from where we first started mm -hmm. to our larger main domain, Dad Two Diaper, mm -hmm. and it's all under the big umbrella now. All the same thing. It, it makes it sound like we're such a large and you know monumental company. No, we're just growing quickly. <laughs> we are growing quickly. I love it, you know, but it's nice. So, yeah, everything under one roof, it makes it a lot easier for us now and hopefully a lot easier for you. So when you search Dads Who Diaper, uh, it's going to come up exactly as you search it. And, uh, you know, when you tell your friends about it, and they can go find us. And I will ask you if you enjoy this podcast to do one of two things. Subscribe to this podcast. You get delivered every week. I don't have to remind you to go get it. It'll come right there to your iPhone or list, I, you know, listening device. Spoon fed to you just the way Paul likes things. Exactly. Easy and lazy. That's my motto. <laughs> and then also, if you enjoy it, give us a review on iTunes. Spread the word. Help more people know about our podcast. Yes, we're, we're still stuck on uh, three reviews right now. And Paul, Paul, clearly you haven't gone in and, and reviewed us yourself. Of course not. None of those reviews are me. <laughs> so we're hoping we can get a few more reviews. Pump us up to the, the front page there and, uh, you know, do what you can. It, it we, we love hearing from you, and, you know, and let us know. Uh, a five-star review is preferable. It does a lot of good. Help spreading the word of this podcast and the work we do. And we're not afraid to have a shameless plug for a five-star review. No. <laughs> Ever. Ever. <laughs> there you go. In a moment, go ahead and review us on iTunes or subscribe to the podcast, dadswhodiaper.com. Now, as I return from Disneyland, which we're going to talk about a little later in this podcast, we've come back, of course, with uh, toys. We didn't buy a lot of souvenirs, but a lot of knickknacks and crap. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> all the stuff my child enjoys. Right. Now, before you left, we talked a lot about the secrets of Disneyland and, and, and buying ahead of time. So how, how does that work into, the, into this? Well, we're going to talk kind of the whole recap of the trip here in a few minutes. Okay. What I want to talk about was the toy box because we're getting to the age, and you probably are too, where you're transitioning. You had all these toys you were given mm -hmm. at, at like um, birth, and then now the kid played with those and the, the stacker cups and the finger puppets, and you're starting to acquire actual toys, and it's time for the purge. Uh, yes, okay. Where you have to go in and decide, really, has my kid played with this, and does he need to still be playing with this? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a tough thing because the toy box can only hold so much. And I don't know about you. I don't want to be that guy or the family who has that room exploding with toys 
and stuffed animals for no reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I hear you. And we came back, and we had to kind of go through and say, like, you know, the nine stuffed animals aren't needed. He doesn't even play with stuffed animals. So we took them all out but one, put them back. And you go through the toy box, and you're like, all right, well, the stacking cups probably aren't used anymore, and finger puppets aren't played with, and stuff like that. So, so, you, so you're replacing with new toys – Exiting the old toys. A little bit, and just kind of looking at what's actually being used, right. and are you storing it for no reason? I would like my wife to use the same concept with her closet. You know, that's a whole different podcast. <laughs> one, Sorry, honey. The rule in our house is I just don't open her closet. <laughs> okay. Even though I did have like a giant purge of myself, and I looked in my dresser. I don't get a closet. I get a dresser. Mm-hmm. She gets the closet. Mm-hmm. And... I realized I probably didn't need 47 undershirts, so I took all but, like, six out of them. But the Masters of the Universe t-shirt you're wearing today clearly made the cut. Chad, this is new. <laughs> oh, it's brand new. <laughs> Before I even left for Disney, I per- picked this up. This is, like, its second wear. Thank you very much. But And then, too, like, the underwear, it's like, you know, at some point... The stuff that's been around since the original Nintendo, I could probably get rid of. <laughs> the college days, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you. at some point, you don't need 26 pairs. I mean, how many days do I go between washings? <laughs> Hopefully not that many. Hopefully not that many. Okay, so that so the toy box, so what, what's coming into It's kind of an analogy. All, well, I mean, we're talking a little older toys, a lot more books, a lot more interactive things, and then stuff we bought. Like, he's kind of now, action figures aren't the right words, but they have those giant clunky like plastic like mickey mouses and stuff like mm-hmm. the pvc kind of stuff right and so those are kind of in right now it's he's almost transitioned to starting to use his imagination and d duck that's what he calls donald duck oh d duck yeah that's his favorite okay it's like mickey mini d duck and then for daisy he calls her mini duck <laughs> it's like mini mouse but right. unfortunately he calls her mini duck <laughs> mini duck he doesn't know it's called daisy <laughs> that's right he'll learn in exactly time. in time but i think you know even for clothes my wife has a real problem with this on his dresser is going through and pulling out the clothes that don't really fit anymore because her more than I get attached to cute clothing that he looks good in. Mm-hmm. You don't want to admit to yourself, look, he doesn't fit in the 12 Mo anymore. <laughs> it becomes like a belly shirt. Right. And sure, it's a cute. Little plumber crack. Yeah, it's a cute Janie and Jack outfit, but it's four sizes too small. Right. Do you have the same problem where you're, because, you know, Wyatt's now just changed, had his first birthday. Right. And. You're probably having to transit. He's a bigger boy than my son. He's taller, I mean. <laughs> he's taller. He's got some tree trunk thighs and as he's, well. You've had to transition to the larger clothing. Oh, yeah. We're in um, – we're, we're pushing 18-month clothing right now. Uh, in fact, we were just putting some jammies on him the other night that were a little, a little tight, trying to squeeze the, the snaps in there. Uh, and so we're averaging basically 18 to 24-month clothing uh, even though we're only at 12 months. In. And do you find Jessica holding on to clothing she finds cute, even though it doesn't really fit as well? You know, there, there's definitely favorite outfits, but what she did is she took all, like, her favorite um, onesies from the first year and took them to a friend and actually had a quilt made out of them. And so, it, I, I, you know, I know your feelings about quilts. And I'm just uh, saying you don't have enough <laughs> quilts. I I foresee this becoming decoration more than like actual function. Where are you going to hang this up at? D- d- don't ask. This, okay, I'm, I so, had, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had nothing to do with this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I I think in theory the idea is is very good, but you, you've got to you know I haven't seen it, so who knows? It may come back and it may be fantastically awesome. Uh, but she she picked out I think like twelve of of her favorite outfits, took it on over to the uh, quilt maker. They cut them out and and made made a quilt. And so yes, yeah, so, so that's what many of the favorite outfits from the first year turned into. <laughs> could, you, you've got a vein on your forehead bulging right no, now. No, no. You, you know what? You're a, you, to <laughs> each their own. Honestly, I have no room to say anything because. Each person enjoys their own number of quilts, <laughs> and they enjoy their own sentimental quilting. And so whatever you want to do in your household is up to you. <laughs> I mean, your aversion to quilts, I mean, I can just see it on your face right now. Here's the thing. Okay, we- here's a question I ask. Okay, okay. Go do for you, it. Do you use a quilt at night right now? Does, um, your, does your kid even use a quilt? At night, no. But during the day, <laughs> during the day, he does So your kid doesn't even use a quilt. No, he still uses a sleep sack. 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, anyway, so we go back to the original. <laughs> I don't want to get myself in too much trouble here. Um, the toy box. How, do you have a defined space for his toys? No. Uh, They're we, just exploding everywhere? D- well, in two locations, specifically. So you don't have, like, a box or a trunk or anything? We try. We we actually used an old laundry basket uh, down in the basement that we try and pile everything into at the end of the day. But we – our house is 99 years old, and as much as we love it, it's not the most functional house for a newborn or, or a young child. You know, back in that day, people were a lot smaller. Spaces weren't nearly as big. No master bathrooms. Yeah, no yeah. master bathrooms and all that kind of stuff. And so – Spaces are defined, and it's not necessarily open concept as a lot of people um, want today. I mean, it's renovated and it's beautiful, but it just so we have a living room that's got a bunch of toys, and we try and corral them next to the couch for one space. And then down in the basement, we've got, you know, carpeted and all that kind of stuff, but it just kind of spills out everywhere. And then at the end of the day, we just try and put it back into the what about his bedroom. Does he have a defined space? Like toy you, space. You know, we don't play much in the bedroom. Um, ju- just because it, it, it again, it's kind of small, and, and you know, there's not a lot of open space for him to move around in. So we try and you know, the basement's pretty much all his, and he can you know do what he wants down there. So we just we just have very limited amounts of space. So we try to limit the toys really that we have, but. You know, inevitably, you collect them. And, you know, for his birthday, we got a lot of, you know, new stuff. So we kind of are doing the purge you're talking about as well, just because we don't have room for all this stuff. And I'm not sure maybe it's an age thing and you're going to see this, like the lights coming down the train tracks for you. But you start getting bigger toys, which start being a problem because we have, like in the last few weeks, people have gifted us like things that their kids don't need anymore, like a Strider bike. Mm-hmm. Um, one of those sit and push motorcycles. Mm-hmm. And we have a Kawasaki power we will keep outside, which he really loves. Yeah. We have a train table now someone gave us, mm. which we put in our kitchen. We have a big section that we don't use of our kitchen. Right. And so that's there. So also, And we have a wagon, like a little red wagon. Not like a full-size one, but like a mini-time one. Mm-hmm. And so all these things take an enormous amount of space. Yes, the bigger they get, the toys grow with them exponentially. And so now you're looking around, and what used to be like a finger puppet is now a train table. <laughs> and you're just like, oh my gosh, this takes up so much room. Right, and it's hard because they, it's easy for all of it to take over your space. And you're like, oh, well, let's just put this over here. And then the next thing you know, well, that's there, so let's put this over there. And you know, before you know it, you've got six rooms of your house that are play spaces. All right. So if you have a great idea for maybe toy storage, I keep mine. I built a little thing that goes under my crib or our crib and it rolls out for his toys. And pretty much once that's full, we have to throw stuff away. Yeah. And, but if you have a better idea, I'd love to see it right there in the comments under this podcast post or even in the forum, check it out there, make a post. What do you do with your toys? How do you store them? And when do you decide things should be purged? Or what do you do? Or it, it, maybe you, you're keeping them for your a, a future child. You know, like that's a big thing. Like we are kind of in that in that thing. Well, do we get rid of this or do we keep it for another child? But if then if we have a girl, we had a boy first. If we have a girl, like a lot of these toys aren't necessarily, you know, traditionally girl toys. Girls should, can play with action I know, figures, yeah, it, does, it doesn't Come matter. On. But the, the fact of the matter is, is like, what do you do with these toys in the meantime? And we're short on storage as it is, and to hold on to a lot of that stuff for, you know, who knows how long is, huh. We have some pretty good storage at our house. Uh, yes, I've seen it. You and have amazing storage. We're currently storing our old toys, so my sister-in-law's old baby stuff. So, okay, you, so basically what you're telling me is I can bring my stuff over and store it at your house. We're a small baby storage unit is pretty much what I'm saying. Excellent, excellent. The check's in the mail. Perfect. You turn the corner, and there it is, and they're like, Woo! Oh, please, oh, please, please buy the 40 of pebbles. Please, please, please. We are not buying that. We bought it before. You guys didn't even eat it. It went stale. We had to throw it away. We'll eat it today. We'll eat it. We'll eat it in the car on the way home. I promise. I swear. I promise. I swear. I said, I'm not buying it. Put it back. You gotta buy it. You gotta buy it. You gotta buy it. <laughs> It's the Dads Who Diaper podcast. The sad thing is I just came back from vacations we talked about. We're going to talk about more. And the first day back on Monday. Let's talk more about your vacation. I'd really enjoy that. You know what? There's a lot of parenting things to be learned on vacation. (laughs) Thank you very much. But 
<laughs> uh, as, as you said earlier, it's like the first day of school. Monday, I had a lot of energy, and I was very excited to work on the website, get back to work, and woo! And then now, Tuesday, the day we record this podcast... I'm, I don't, I'm not feeling it so much anymore. <laughs> I'm kind of tired. Yesterday, you're like, oh my gosh, we're going to do this and this and this and this and this on the po- on the website, and I've got it all taken care of. I'm like, wow, you're making me feel very unproductive today. You're like, it's okay, I just got back from vacation. And today, it's a bit more like this. Today, whatever gets done is okay. <laughs> How quickly that high comes down. I need more pixie sticks. <laughs> you didn't pick any of those up on vacation? No, thank goodness. No, good. We'll get into it later, though, in this segment, talking about getting back to routine, though. That yeah. I'm having a real problem with that with our child because we let a few things slip, like a lot of parents do. Mm-hmm. And then getting back, they're too young to understand that was vacation time, and this is not vacation time. Right. Dad, why are you making me do this? I didn't have to do it yesterday. Exactly. But now I have to do it today. So so you were at Disneyland, the happiest place on earth, and in I would imagine you've seen a lot of things, good parenting, bad parenting, Maybe you had a few high moments of yourself and a few low moments in parenting. <laughs> what was what was the experience like for you? Um, it was not bad. The travel wasn't that bad. We bought a separate seat for him. We've just learned, you know, it's K- the kick in the money. Buy a seat for him to sit down in, especially for takeoff and landings. You can buckle him in, leave him there. He's not kicking you in the face. Technically, can he still f- fly free? I think anything under two, two you yeah. can use laps. So, seats. yeah, so he's... Still technically available to fly yeah. free. Yeah. Okay. And the great thing is our car seat, the one we use, doesn't like fold down, so they can't get it through the x-ray machine. We were traveling with a group, and one of our friends actually took the car seat through x-ray for us because our hands were full. And they asked her, ma'am, does this car seat fold down? And she's like, I don't know. It's not even mine. <laughs> and they said, what? <laughs> and she got pulled aside for like super like TSA screening. So no, apparently no matter what you do at TSA – don't say the luggage you're putting through security is not yours. Oh, that's classic. I mean, of all the things that we should know by now. Don't <laughs> say traveling. this luggage does not belong to me. <laughs> that's great. Were you close enough by to like say? No. <laughs> We'd already kind of gone through and putting the kids' shoes back on and everything. Oh, that's funny. But the travel wasn't bad in the way there. He's entertaining them with uh, the iPad. We had downloaded Daniel Tiger. A million fruit snacks. We even bought those Crayola like uh, coloring books that only mark on the coloring books. How well do those work? They work pretty well. Yeah. And so they're a little expensive, but I think worth it to keep your clothes from getting all messed up. Mm -hmm. And then we landed and stopped at In-N-Out Burger. You you texted me that photo. Like first thing you do once wheels down in California, In-N-Out. And I'm like, oh, sure. Well, I think we landed at 10 and by 1035 we were at In-N-Out Burger. (laughs) But – uh. My little chubby ginger there loved In-N-Out Burger. Did he, did he do it? What, what do they call it? Um, a two-by-four animal style? Yeah. <laughs> Extra crispy french fries? <laughs> That's his thing. And a milkshake? Mm. Oh, man, you're making me hungry. It's only 8.45 in the morning. Exactly. And then we finished up there, and we were able to check in early. We had rented a house. Yes. Because it was considerably cheaper than staying on property. And this house, in the, the photos that you sent me, was pretty darn spectacular. You know, you'd be surprised – how inexpensive a really great house right around Disneyland can be. We didn't spend that much money, and we had a four-bedroom house with a pool, and we were able to go buy groceries, and there were six adults and three children in our party. I think we spent $500 on groceries for the week. Mm -hmm. We factored we would have spent $300 together per day in the parks if we ate in the parks every day. Mm -hmm. So $500 was a small price to pay for the entire week. Right. And we ate real food. Tacos, barbecue chicken, hamburgers, bacon and eggs for breakfast. Mm-hmm. So real actual things we could feed the kids. Right. And I think that was trying to keep a little bit of the routine in place there and to save money as well. But it was a 20-minute walk, which wasn't bad. And we had rented strollers like we talked about. Mm-hmm. So instead of bringing our nice stroller down and getting it banged up or bringing a cheap stroller and cursing it constantly, <laughs> we went with this online stroller company. They had it locked up to the gate of our rental house before we even arrived. Oh, really? Just sitting there waiting? Sitting there waiting. They'd emailed my wife the password for the combination of the lock. Mm -hmm. We unlocked it, used it the entire week, locked it back up, and it's left. Hmm. And so it was a really great service. That's how – I mean that's super, super convenient. And it was a double stroller. We rented a double stroller. Uh I think it was $55 for the week. Total. Total. 
Wow. And so that's not bad. No, that's that's money well spent and, and a headache that you don't have to deal with going it's, through security. Exactly. You don't have to worry about your own stroller getting stolen in the parks. Mm-hmm. Even though, you know, I don't think that really is that big a deal. But you don't have to worry about it getting beat up through TSA. And just, you know, $55, I thought money well spent. Oh, sure. And so we went back and forth. 20-minute walk. Wasn't bad with the kids. It was 20 minutes from our door to the park. Mm-hmm. But we tried to really maintain. You'd spend that much time looking for parking and walking to the gates. No, there were a couple days we actually did. We would drive to the parking garage and take the monorail to the park. Mm -hmm. And it was exactly the same amount of time. Yeah. But some pe- later in the week, because it was 102 degrees, Ugh. later in the week, some people didn't feel like pushing the kids mm-hmm. for 20 minutes. <laughs> so it'd be the exact same amount of time, but it'd be less pushing. Right. Eh, trade so, off. you know, trade off. But as it cooled down a little bit towards the end, it wasn't as bad. But I think the whole thing for the week you learn is routine. Routine, routine, routine is important. Keep your kids on the somewhat same routine as they have at home. We They get up early, of course. That's not a problem. You get there, park opens, and we stayed till about 11, 11.30. We'd walk back, have lunch, put them down for their naps or quiet time, and then we would have an early dinner. 3.30 or 4 or 4.30, something like that. That's early. It is pretty early. <laughs> and then we'd walk back to the parks at 5, stay for like two hours with the kids. And then we just know, hey, we'd like to stay, but they have to go to bed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, half the party went back, put the kids to sleep at, you know, bath, dinner, or snack. Mm-hmm. Bedtime, 8 o'clock. And then one person would stay and watch the kids sleep, and we'd walk back to the park. You just saw way, way, way too many bad parenting decisions <laughs> where they would keep their kid all day in the parks. They'd get their son up. They'd be there through the crowded, most hot times of the day, barely feed their kids anything but a corn dog. And then at 11 p.m., they'd scream at their kid for being cranky and, and tired. And wondering why they're acting the way they are. Why they're melting down. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, I can't say I have the perfect example of parenting because that's probably not true but you have to think that the idea of dragging your kids all day through the parks when they're four three five years old not a good idea well i like and i have not been to disneyland since i was 10 years old so that's like you know 20 some odd years ago um and you would have to think that a little strategy like we talked before goes a long way and i really like and if if we were to go down and and do disneyland i really like the way that you structure it you get up and go early you come back you take a little break in the day i mean the parks are open late you know and so if you have somebody who can stay with the children at night you know then you and you can even trade off from day to day that's what we did you know every day kind of rotated right all right so you stay from eight till we get back listen to kids sleep Mm -hmm. you read your book watch tv and then there's enough people that every day only took one shift. Right. And so then that way, as an adult, you also get to enjoy the park. And everybody, for the most part, stays even keel. You don't have epic meltdowns, hopefully. And it, it's a good strategy rather than saying, oh, I have to just get every last ounce of time here uh, right now. And you brought up a good point. You know, when you're paying that much money and you're traveling as far as, you know, many people are, and you, and it's such a big investment in time, money, and, and effort, you, you feel like you have to soak every last drop out of it. But strategizing a little bit allows you to enjoy it and feel like you still had a wonderful time. I think going into it, you have to understand it's going to be a different vacation with your kids. Right. I mean, they are the reason you're there, hopefully. <laughs> and you need to understand what works best for them. By the end of the week, you want them not to be burnt out, tired, and angry. And then two, having the decision ahead of time we talked about going back for naps or leaving early, have a plan in place. Talk to your spouse, your wife, and just say, look, you know, hopefully we agree this is our plan. We can stretch it here and there a little bit. Like the last night, we kept them out a little bit later because it was the last night. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is our decision. Let's stick to it. And then you have a plan in place. You both understand it. And you can say, you know, sure, it'd be great to keep staying in the parks at noon. Mm -hmm. Pick up that one extra ride. Ride Splash Mountain one more time. But it's 1130. We got to start walking back. Let's not get in line because by the time you get in line, you ride the ride. And then you walk back. Give the kids lunch. They won't be asleep till 130. Right. That's way past their bedtime, their, (laughs) their nap time then. Yeah. And so, you know, I think routine's a big one. 
And there were a few times we did eat out in the parks, like twice. We ate twice. Mm -hmm. And you can just see how big a pain in the rear it is. It's no fun. And, you know, taking one kid at a small restaurant here in town can be a pain. Imagine taking him to a really crowded, busy, exciting, flashy environment. They're not going to eat, and that makes it even worse. Mm -hmm. And you've paid a bunch of money for the meal, so you feel stupid. You don't get to eat, so you've wasted that money, mm -hmm. and then you're hungry and tired. So, you know, I just don't really think, at least at the age our kid is now, even eating out was a good – even we wanted to wasn't a good idea. Yeah. So I, I do have this question for you. You're uh – your child is about 19 months, right? Yeah. So do you think that for others who may be listening right now and for, and for us, if we decide, you know, we want to do a Disney trip with family or whatnot, is 19 months old enough to understand? Like, did, did Carver get what was going on and was he excited about the Disney experience? I don't know if he gets as, what's going on, mm -hmm. but he loved like Small World and Splash or Jungle Cruise. And there were a bunch of rides, Buzz Lightyear. He couldn't play it. Right. But, I mean, like, Small World blew his mind. Yeah. Like, when I rode that thing, like, six times, he gave a little more. Mm hmm And Winnie the Pooh and a couple of things in California Adventure he so rode. So you don't think he was too young to, to experience it? It's the very, very tip, the early tip. Though. Gotcha. And so, I mean, you're there more for you than him, but he did really enjoy it. Like, so we had warmed up to Mickey Mouse. We tried. And he wouldn't actually hug the characters. He was scared to hug them. But he was excited to see Mickey Mouse. Mm, mm -hmm. And so we kind of had to hold him for the pictures like two feet away. Yeah. But from two feet away, he was very excited to see <laughs> Mickey. From touching Mickey Mouse, he freaked out. Gotcha. And you were there with other family members and other kids. So, you know, you, you kind of had a wide variety of ages there. So, But that's good to know because, you know, we, we actually, with, with your trip – underway my wife and i were talking about like you know, gosh like when is a good time to go and, and and try and experience that and we just weren't really sure i think that the beginning stages of kind of magic starts about where my child is now mm -hmm. and then the next stage the kid was with we had a five-year-old and that was right where you really started to ex he wanted to do all the rides he was excited for them but he was still a little bit scared of the characters because his personality is that way gotcha and he couldn't do the bigger rides like, he didn't want to do Splash Mountain, Tower of Terror, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. even though he was tall enough to do it. So that was kind of the next step. So I think you have, like, 20 months for, like, the intro, mm -hmm. five years for the next size, and then, you know, probably 13 years old is probably the next one. Yeah, to really, really like it. Yeah. And then I'll get to quickly some of just the terrible parenting examples I saw. I mean, people, for love of God, just be better parents. You know, most of you are great a few of you are just terrible. <laughs> not not our listeners. All of our listeners are great. No, if you're listening to this, obviously you've taken steps to be great parents. <laughs> so you're probably a, t a great example. You are a 10 out of a 10. Oh, maybe even 11. Right. But these people are not. Now, the first example, I saw some couple wheel their grandma on a wheelchair through the handicap line so they could get on the ride faster. But when they got to the front, they pushed grandma off to the side. She wasn't even getting on the ride. They, they just left her there, and they all piled on. Yes. And boy, the Disney cast members laid into them. He wrote a note on their handicap card that he wouldn't allow that ever again. So, like, from now on, they had to, like, any ride they used the handicap ramp, they were going to have to make sure Grandma rode with them <laughs> because they can't just use her to get on the rides. So now I imagine when you say Disney cast members laid into them, I imagine it goes no. something along this. Sir, could you please make sure that you do not yes. ever please do that again? Thank you. Oh, it is. I mean, let's <laughs> let's be honest. Disney laying into you is way different. It was, <laughs> sir, you need to understand the policies in place to help people who need the help. You don't need the help because you're clearly walking. So I'm going to put a note in your card that says from now on, you can only use this card if the member in the wheelchair is getting on the ride. It's not get the hell to the back of the line. No, it should be. <laughs> no, I did see that, though. A family walked up for no reason whatsoever through the handicap line and pa bypassing everyone else and demand to get on, and they wouldn't let them on, and they got pretty upset. The, the family did? Yeah. And you're like, you don't understand why the rest of us are waiting. It's not for our health. I always wonder, like, what's going through people's minds when they do that? It's like, you, you know, do you, do you just blatantly not get it? Do you not understand? 
or do you just think rules don't apply to you and that all these fine people standing in this line are, you know, minions and you deserve to be at the front? Yeah. And then another fine parenting example for your kids is uh, one the one night we – one of the two nights we did buy food, we were in this line to check out with our cheeseburgers or whatever we bought. And there was a pretty long line for the cashier. And it was one of those double-sided checkout lanes, but she's only operating on the one side. The other side was closed. And a dad who had a plate full of cheeseburgers and stuff went up the closed line and put his tray down, expecting to be checked out. And she explained kindly that there's only the one line. She's not working the back side of the line. And he got upset and stood there for like five minutes, clearly thinking she's going to break to his will and check him out. But he didn't. So what does he do? He grabs his food, his tray, and his kids, and walks out without paying for his food. All of it. Just yeah. ditches. Dines and ditches. Yes. Or ditches and dines, I guess. <laughs> what, he just totally leaves without paying his food right in front of his kids. Wow. You know, you don't get your way. Just you know, leave and don't pay for your food. How much, and by no means do I condone any of this, but I'm the type of person when I get around big crowds, I kind of just start getting a little frustrated just because I see things like that. And I'm just like, you know, everybody else here is trying to do it right. And you over there think that you're better than everybody else. Like, did you find yourself getting frustrated with things at times or, or, or seeing things that really made you want to? Well, you see things, but. I think you're just trying to focus on your own family so much. Right, right, right. The only time I ever say anything is we were in long line for Radiator Springs. And someone literally just walked up and started standing right behind me, like kind of scooted in between me and the person behind me. Mm -hmm. And the girls behind me, who I didn't know, they, they didn't say anything. I'm like, what? So I just started talking. I'm like, sir, oh, the line's back there. He's like, oh, there's a line? I'm like, yes, it's back there. And he's like, oh, I didn't know. I'll just, he just, and he just kept standing there. Ignorance is no excuse. Yeah. And I said, no, no, sir. You need to walk back and get back in line. Oh, okay. And kept standing there. And I eventually just made such a loud point embarrassing this guy. People were starting to look at him that he did get out of line and walked back. <laughs> I essentially embarrassed him to the point he didn't want to cut the crowd anymore in the line. You publicly shamed him. Yes. Well done. Yes. Publicly shaming always works. <laughs> I, you know, is Disneyland or any theme park for that the, of that scale? Disneyland, Disney World, Universal, you know, all those kinds of places. Do you find that it, it and it and I ask because I haven't been to any of them in a really long time. Do you find that it is worth the investment to go? Because for most people, it, it's a plane ride to away for for these locations. You know, what I think that if they're under probably five. You have to understand the vacation is probably more for you than them. Mm -hmm. the, the return on investment, I mean. And, you know, it is pretty expensive, but you have to enjoy – if you enjoy Disney, you enjoy that kind of atmosphere, and you know what you're getting into it for. You know, if they're under five, it's mostly for you. You're not going to be there all day. If they're over five, it's going to be kind of a magical thing, but they can't ride everything, mm -hmm. and you probably still can't be there all day. You can't commando the parks entirely. If you're okay with those things going in, then yes. I, I mean, I, for, it's worth it for our family. We mm -hmm. really like it. Right. And then I'm going to leave this very last parenting, terrible parenting example. Just throw it out there and say I did the best I could at the time, and I think it got taken care of. But there is no excuse for this. It's probably borderline criminal. But coming out of Radiator Springs a different day, it was probably 102 degrees this day. And – Outside of Radiator Springs, there was a park bench in the full sun, and there was a girl on that park bench laying down who might have been 12 or 13 years old and obviously severely mentally handicapped. And she'd been laying in that sun long enough. She clearly was way, way, way overheated. I mean I don't know if she was having heat stroke, but she's probably almost there. She was shaking and sweating. And couldn't really communicate because of her mental disabilities, what was going on. Her parents had to have left her there so they could go on this ride. So the, there were no parents around her. No. There's no one whatsoever. And the ride time at that time was probably 65 minutes. So clearly the parents, at least I think clearly, they set her on that park bench and waited in line, just leaving her there in the sun. And so I ran over and got a cast member to, quickly to go look at her. And at the same time, another couple saw what happened, and they ran over and saw her and got her out of the park bench onto the shade 
But within a few minutes, Disney had like 10 people around this girl figuring out what's going on. And that's kind of where I left it because, you know, it's not my business to be sticking around. Disney had it under control. But I can only hope everything turned out okay. But, I mean, the parents who would do this, I can't even understand why you would do this kind of thing. I mean, suppose you go there and you're like, oh, my daughter's holding back our vacation or whatever. She's your daughter. You take care of her. She's your job. You don't leave her on a park bench in the sun to get heat stroke just because she holds you back from riding a ride. I mean, you are terrible, borderline, illegal parents. And just, you know, I don't want to get into it too much, but it's one of those things as a parent it really upsets you mm -hmm. to see someone who would do that to their own child. I, at least you and this other couple and, and, and Disney cast members, you know, it's good to know that they came to her aid and, and – you know, we don't truly know the the background, but clearly she was in need of help, and you know, it's a good thing that she got it. But you're you're right. I this is a belief of mine, and, and it's not what, very well founded. But I I tend to think that amusement parks and, and those kinds of places at times bring out the worst in people, and I think this is one of those instances because you just it, it's I don't know how you could possibly imagine doing that to somebody. I'm not sure bring up the worst. I think it's always like they say about money. It makes you more of what you are. <laughs> so, you know, if you go to Disney, spend a bunch of money, you start having expectations. You you have a – you put money down so you demand a magical vacation. Yeah. You put money down so you demand your kids spend hours and hours in the park. You demand their perfect little angels because you took them there, and so it's a gift. <laughs> That's not going to happen. It's not realistic. You know, it's it's a magical time for your family, but your family's still who they are. You still They still need naps. They still need fed. And so those kind of things. And quickly, before we move on, I want to touch on this real quickly as a routine. The hard thing now is we're back, and we have to try to bring our son back to normal routine because we let him spend too much time with our my wife's iPhone watching screen time. Because oh. you're in line for the rides. You're on the plane, and you know you feel like bad parents. So you let him play with – watch Mickey Mouse or Daniel Tiger on the iPhone. And so now these last couple of days have been brutal – because he demands more TV, yes, more, the sign language for more, more. Mm -hmm. Tiggy, 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 Minnie, Mi or Mickey, Mickey. He calls it Hot Doggy, Hot Doggy. Because <laughs> that song for Hot Dog, Hot Dog, Hot oh, Doggy, yeah. Dog. And then D Duck, D Duck for Donald Duck. But it makes you feel like a terrible parent for A, saying no, and B, him asking for it in the first place. But we're having to really scale back. We've gave him like no TV time at all since like Saturday. How is he reacting? I mean, is he throwing a fit? Is he having a little tantrums? bit? I mean, a little bit of tinter tantrum. It's kind of outside his range. You kind of see what it does to a kid's personality. Like that much TV, you can kind of see it already affect him. So we're trying to scale back quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think over the next couple of days, he'll be fine. But you just see, you know, boy, you got to be careful about that and how you can easily go awry giving him too much TV time on vacation. Mm -hmm. And the transition is always the hardest. It is. You know, because it's easy to adapt one way or the other, but it's that that bridge th to get to one of those locations well, that's more difficult. It's easy to say like, oh, you know, he's crying. I'll just give him the, t the phone back now and mm -hmm. make him quiet, and then he can go back to doing whatever you do. Right. But kind of being a real parent and saying, look, he's going to cry. It's going to be harder on me. We'll take him outside and play in the yard. Distract him. Exactly. <laughs> so there you go. You know, hopefully you learned something from this Disney trip. Hopefully something you can take away from this. But I would recommend it, and, you know, I'm sure, Chad, are you thinking about taking your son? Well, we would like to. I mean, clearly, it, it's a it's a good idea, and we have cousins who are of, a, of prime Disney age. And I love your idea of renting a house and just having – and they don't live here, and so it would be a great location to everybody kind of just, you know, head to. Um, I don't think we're there yet. I think we'll probably wait until – two at the earliest um just you know we're, we're just kind of we're not there but i think we i mean we we for the very first time walked the other day you know so it, to to go through the park at, at this age still too young for us but uh i there's in talking with you about disney because i i'm admittedly you know like i said i haven't been there in for so long and i, I don't really have this amazing connection to the parks um but listening to you talk and, and sharing the stories and, and your excitement for, for going down there definitely makes me think, hey, we should probably do it, be doing that sometime soon. Makes me feel any better. We've already scheduled our October 2015 trip. Oh, geez. <laughs> Same house? No, we're going to Disney World. Oh, Disney World this time. 
My goodness. We'll keep you informed. Yes, please do. The men who aren't afraid to get a little poo-poo on their fingers. Dads who diaper. There are 13, maybe 12, 12 or 13 Fridays left before Christmas. So naturally, everybody's already thinking about the holidays, holiday toys, right? I already bought all my presents. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I haven't even thought. Have you really? I did. Oh, my gosh. Would I'm you- really cheap. And so throughout the year, I look at like super deal websites. And if anything pops up, I think somebody will buy or you have for Christmas. I'll buy it. Hold it. So what are you getting me then? I can't tell you. Oh, boy. Probably- Hopefully, do you have a coal furnace? <laughs> no, I do not. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Anywho, Toys R Us this week launched their Fabulous 15, the toys they think you are going to be scrambling to get all holiday season long come Black Friday and whatnot. So what did we do? We put them together for you. We've got them all on our website, a beautiful slideshow, and uh, all the information you need for the Fabulous 15. So go check it out and uh, learn a little bit about the toys your kids are going to be begging you for here in just a short while. I noticed you're a big fan of the slideshow. Well, it's an easy way to highlight all the photos. No, it is nice. Thank you. Is it is it hard? I don't like doing stuff that's hard. Should I start having slideshows in my posts? It is not very difficult. It's amazing what technology will do for you these days. All right. So I want to see a slideshow in your next post. I am pretty lazy. <laughs> we, well, we know. But I think you too can do it, Paul. All right. So check out Chad's post with the fantastically easy slideshow. <laughs> the Fabulous 15 on dadsudiaper.com. All right, so on the show this week, we talked uh, Disney, mm-hmm. talked a little more Disney, talked about Disney toys, and we talked about Starbucks at Disney. <laughs> so it was kind of a big doing for you with the Starbucks talk. <laughs> you laugh. What do you have currently right in front of you? I, <laughs> it is true. I do have a Starbucks cup right in front of me An right empty now. Starbucks cup that you've emptied, and you've still gone back like three times, shaking it, and then drink, to drink like a little more of the swill at the bottom. Well, I don't have an IV to pump directly <laughs> into my arm. We've been we've been here. It is only 9.30 in the morning, but yet we've already been here for at least an hour and a half working hard, so I got to, you know, I need fuel. Do you realize if you stopped going to Starbucks, you could quit one of your part-time jobs? <laughs> I don't have any part-time jobs. I have just jobs that I love to do with passion. Well, you could quit parenting that one job. No, wait. That's the, you don't get paid for that. It's a, pay, it's a no. thankless, thankless, payless job that we all love to do. Indeed. But the other ones at Starbucks, here's the thing. If you got a job at Starbucks, you would actually make money and get free coffee. Do they get free coffee? I assume they're around the coffee all day. <laughs> See, here's the beauty of working for yourself. I can go and get my coffee and, and and relax and do my work while I drink my coffee and not have to listen to Paul Snowden chastise me for as many times as I go to Starbucks. <laughs> and you get the shakes. <laughs> but it, it's a good place for me to get out of the house for a few minutes and, and not have to, you know, I can get some work done. You know, when you work for yourself, you, sometimes you just need to get out and, and do it. Have you ever never heard of the library <laughs> or Chuck E. Cheese? Uh, or no, thank you. The mall? No, no, none, none of those. None of those work. They're all too far from my house. What Chuck E. Cheese is always convenient. <laughs> Fortunately, it is not for us. And I'm, I, I hope that my son will never quite catch on to that is Chuck E. Cheese. That is – what is Chuck E. Cheese? You don't want to take your kid to Chuck E. Cheese? Uh, I mean, I'm sure it will happen at they some They serve point. alcohol. Do they now? They've always served alcohol. They have? Yeah, you get the big pitcher of beer. Don't you read the stories? Like, you've done the news. There's always those Chuck E. Cheese brawls. For I in all the years that I did TV news, I don't ever remember reporting on a single Chuck E. Cheese alcohol induced brawl. See, mostly did local news, but um, there would be like once every three weeks some national story about a Chuck E. Cheese brawl because a parent got too inebriated and punched another parent. <laughs> but well, well, at well, at some birthday party or something over tokens or something. Yeah. Oh wow! For I don't even remember the last time I was at a Chuck E. Cheese. Like I, I it literally is not registering with me, but. Um, but it's good to know that they serve a little alcohol there. I don't. I, I will not get into one of those fights. I did the news. I don't want to be on the news. So. All right. So if you have a great location where Chad has free Wi-Fi where he can do his work, that's not a Starbucks. It's the Snowden household. That has happened before. <laughs> but I changed the passwords. Now you don't know the Wi-Fi. Oh, darn it. Once again, please check out the website dadswhodiaper.com. For Chad Carter, I am Paul Snowden. This has been the Dads Who Diaper podcast. Well, my daddy left home when I was three and he didn't leave much. 
to Ma and me Just this old guitar and an empty bottle of booze Now I don't blame him cause he run and hid But the meanest thing that he ever did Was before he left, he went and named me Sue <laughs> 